In our microscopy videos, we encountered a number of formulas for things such as depth of field, resolution, magnification, and field of view. Rather than simply try to work with these parameters from the videos, we've prepared what we call our microscopy calculator that calculates this all for you. And this is available on our website. We'll walk through it now, take a look at each line. About a third of the way down the page is a horizontal line. That basically divides the spreadsheet into things that are above the line, which are the parameters of a particular optical system, and the elements below the line, which is where we calculate the consequences of those parameters. So let's walk through it. In this case, we have an objective magnification of 20 and an objective numerical aperture of 0.8. That's about as high as a 20x objective gets. And we have air between the objective and the sample cover slip. So the index of refraction of the medium is one. There are other cases where there might be water or oil there, generally for higher numerical aperture applications. We then enter the objective field number. What this is, is the diameter of the image that is well corrected. And it was generally designed for use with an eyepiece, but in this case, we're mapping it onto a sensor. And this is an important number. If you get much beyond this, the image quality falls off. But as we'll see in the calculations below, there are some very interesting optimizations that can be done once we know the objective field number. We're choosing a wavelength of 550 nanometers, which is yellow-green light. And we're then entering parameters of the sensor itself. In this case, the pixels are 2.4 microns square, and there's 5,496 in width and 3,672 in height. This corresponds to a Sony IMX183 sensor, which is implemented in CMOS technology. So, with the parameters entered, let's work through the below-the-line elements to see what we find. Now, the first two parameters, the width and height of the camera sensor, are not especially valuable as such, because you could look them up on the data sheet of the sensor, but we then use those to calculate the diagonal of the sensor, which is just a bit under 16 millimeters. Now, recall that uh, the corrected objective field is 22. So we're not using all of the available field. And you could think, gee, I could have gotten a bigger sensor, but it turns out that's going to be a very interesting degree of freedom, which we'll see in a moment. These systems are, uh, in almost all cases, infinity corrected objectives, and they require a tube lens to form an image on the sensor. And the field of view, FOV here, the field of view is normally simply the sensor diagonal divided by the magnification. And so in this case, the field of view down on the sample will be 0.79 millimeters. Now, this is where the bit about the objective field number comes in, because you don't have to use a unity magnification tube lens. The tube lens focal length can be varied so as to increase the size of the image in the field of view. And in this case, we're going to take the objective field number as if it were a larger sensor, divide it by the objective magnification. And in this case, we've got a field of view, uh, which is 1.1 millimeters. So if our sensor was bigger, we could get a perfectly corrected field of 1.1 millimeters. Now, generally speaking, a bigger field of view is a better thing because you don't have to take as many pictures to image the sample. And the way that we're going to make this work is we're going to change the focal length of the tube lens, which is going to change our magnification, but it will match the larger field of view to the sensor and it will still be fully corrected. So in this case, the magnification we're going to operate at is 14.42. And all that that requires that we do is to change the tube length focal length such that its magnification is not unity, but is 0.72. So this is a superior use of the sensor. Rather than try to find a sensor that exactly matches the objective field number, we simply use the tube lens magnification as a free variable to match them up. 
With our new larger field of view, we have a field of view width of 914 microns, a field of view height of 611 microns, and a field of view area of 0.56 square millimeters. Now, when we take the size of the pixels, which were 2.4 microns, and divide it by our new magnification of 14.42, we get a pixel resolution, also referred to as a geometric resolution, of 0.17 microns. But as we saw in the videos, diffraction doesn't allow you to automatically get the geometric resolution. The diffraction limited resolution is set by the wavelength and the objective's numerical aperture, and in this case, we really can't resolve much better than 0.42 microns. So if we divide the diffraction resolution by the geometric or pixel resolution, it turns out we're oversampling at a factor of about 2.5. And that's actually just about right. Some people think it should be a factor of two, others think it should be a factor of three. Let's split the difference, 2.5, spot on. We then can calculate the depth of field. And in this case, the depth of field is plus or minus 0.26 microns. Now, very few large samples will be that flat and that perfectly aligned, and the stage can also have some angular motions to it. So we're going to want a very nice Z stage, such as perhaps the Dover Motion DOF5, with a tracking, perhaps laser autofocus, to stay within that small depth of field at all times as we take images. Now, a corollary to depth of field is depth of focus. That's actually the distance that we can move the sensor up in the camera, up and down, before we lose focus. That's far larger, that's about a factor of 400 larger, typically the square of the magnification, than the depth of field, which again is how much we can move the sample up and down before we lose focus. Now, we're not likely to move the camera, but if we did, that's how much we could. And then the last element that we calculate is if we take the field of view and tilt it, and now we, of course we normally want the field of view to be exactly perpendicular to the optical axis, but if we tilt it, and inevitably it's not going to be perfect, uh, we, there is a certain tilt where the corners of the field of view will begin to leave the depth of field and begin to lose resolution. And in this case, we've calculated that as being plus or minus 0.23 milliradians, or plus or minus 230 microradians. So that gives us a very good sense of how much tilt is allowed if we're going to have critical high-resolution imaging across the entire field. So that's the microscopy calculator, and we have this as both a static PDF and as a live MathCAD document. If you have MathCAD 15, you can use it, uh, we'll be happy to provide it to you, and you can change the values above the line to reflect your actual optical system and calculate the results in your case. You can also just use the formulas because everything is spelled out here. So we hope you found this useful and feel free to contact us for your next imaging application.